Welcome to the final episode of the Color Theory series. This is the 10th episode of this series and in this episode we're going to cover the tetrad color schemes. The tetrad color schemes, tetrad meaning any group of four. For tetrad, if you keep the symmetry together so that it's either a square or a rectangle then we have three different shapes that we can play with the first one we're going to cover is the square and basically it's a square which contains two pairs of complementary colors with this color scheme you have to be very careful how you place the colors because as we know the complementary colors will create neutralized colors or mud colors and so you either need to avoid the two touching each other if you're putting the two colors down at the same time or just put one color down and then let that dry and put the next color down for these examples i basically just put the complementary colors in the opposite corners so it had minimum amount of mixing because for this example I wanted to avoid creating neutralized color as much as possible so you can see the four colors working together on their own. So first we have this setup where we have the A color, A bracket color down here, D and D bracket. Obviously, you don't have to lay it out like this. You can lay it out in lots of different ways as I showed in two episodes ago. Next one, we tilt one well across and we have the color from B well, bracket B, E and E bracket. By the way, if you are confused as to all the alphabets and what colors should be in here, I will link the video where I outline everything on the top right hand corner for you. And then thirdly, we have this setup where we have the C up here, C bracket, F and F bracket. And with the square, there's only three different ways because when we tilt again, we actually go back to A's and the D's. I would say that the square is quite bright because you have the two complement pairs happening and the two pairs are as different from each other as you can get. Next up, we're going to move on to a narrower shape, whereas the square skipped two wells between the two nodes, we're going to go move on to this which only has one well between the two nodes and this shape has the name of double complementary because you have two pairs of complementary here in this case is the b pair and the f pair the square also can be classified as double complementary because it also has two pairs of complementary colors however it's more well known as the square so here is the double complementary tetrad and the first setup is the B pairs and then the F pairs. And just like the square, you still have a lot of brightness and colors vibrating off each other because you have the two complementary colors. In this kind of color scheme, if I want to turn up the vibrancy even more then I could move the purple over here so that the two complementary colors are right next to each other. Then we move across one well which gives you the A pairs and the C pair. Then we move one across again and this time it's the two D's here and here as well as the B colors. Then we move across again and we get the C pairs as well as the E pairs. And then we move across one more well which gives us the D pairs along with the F pairs. And then finally we have the E pairs here 
as well as the A pairs. And that's the last of the double complementary colour scheme because once you move across again, you're back to having these four as your colours. With a colour scheme that contains four colours, if you create a painting that has equal amounts of the four colours, it's going to get really hard to balance and make it look as a cohesive piece. In this case, I would recommend either picking one colour as a dominant colour or a pair of complementary colours as the dominant colour scheme in your painting and then just put an accent amount of the other two or three colours in your paintings. And then very finally, we move on to an even thinner rectangle. And in this shape, you're going to have two pairs of colours that are right next to each other on the colour wheel, but are also complementary to the other side of the colours. And whereas the square colour scheme had the four colours as far away from each other as possible, and therefore it gave a really vibrant, bright, but very different and quite hard to make it look harmonious group of colours, because you have two pairs that are right next to each other, the colour scheme feels a little bit more harmonious. You still have the two pairs of complementary colours vibrating off each other, but you also have two colours that are quite close and harmonious with each other. So let's have a look at what this tetrad looks like as a colour scheme. First one, we have A and B, A and B, and then the A bracket, and then the B bracket. The only thing you have to be careful with this particular tetrad is that because you have a complementary colour, but also the other colour that's involved on the other side of the colour wheel is also quite close to the complementary colour, there's a lot of opportunities for developing neutralised colours. So whereas with the square, where the four colours were quite separate from each other, it was quite easy to do a wet in wet on four colours in one go and not get too much neutralisation. You will definitely get a lot more neutralisation happening if you put down all the colours at the same time. Then we move on to... The next one which is B and C with bracket B and bracket C. Next one is C, D, C bracket and D bracket. And then we move along again to have D, E, D bracket and E bracket. And then we have E, and F, E bracket and F bracket. And I really like this colour scheme out of all the tetrads. And then finally we have A, F, A bracket and F bracket. And then that's it for this tetrad as if we move on to the next one, it goes back to the first one we saw. So that's it for tetrad and colour schemes. But before I go, I want to give you two tips in your own journey of experimenting with colour theories. First is that if you are going to do your own colour studies like this for colour schemes, I highly recommend you making these kinds of overlays to keep track of what colours you need to paint for each setup. As an example, this is the colour chart that I actually learned to do all this in the first time round when I did it for myself. You can see that it's very well used, but to do the tetrad, I made these little triangles like this. And when I went to paint the little boxes for colour schemes, I use this to keep track. And the reason why these are really helpful is that if you do do a few colour studies for colour schemes, it gets very overwhelming and confusing very quickly as to which colour you're supposed to be mixing. Especially if you are going to experiment with different shapes of triangles or squares or rectangles. So to keep your sanity, I highly recommend 
creating one of these sheets. You can make these out of any kind of clear material. I made these just out of uh, overhead projector sheets. The second tip is a very, very useful website for color schemes. Obviously, painting these color schemes by hand is incredibly time consuming and it's a lot of work. And you might not even want to see every single permutations and combinations of these things. If you just want to see how a certain color looks very quickly and not necessarily in watercolors, then there's a really handy website called Color Supply with an ungodly amount of Ys at the end. But this website allows you to select from complementary, analogous, triad, and split complementary and square color schemes and it gives you a range of different kinds of color combinations within those color schemes that other users have created. And it also shows you examples of what the colors you've chosen will look like in an image and gives you the hex code if you need a hex code. Also how the colors blend with each other and the color range between the most saturated of those colors to white or to black. So it's a really great tool if you have an idea of what kind of color schemes you want to try and use. Say you want to use a split complementary color, then you can just go to the website, pull out the color combination you want and get a good idea of what those colors are going to look like in a painting or an image. So that's it for this color theory series. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. It's been an amazing experience going through all the color theories with you. And thank you for all your kind words about how this series have helped you understand color theory. It's been such a joy to hear that this series have helped so many people to understand color theory and not fear colors and color mixing anymore and be able to mix colors with confidence. I am so glad I made this series because I got to go on this journey with you guys. It's been such a pleasure. From next week, I'm going to move on to doing some really in-depth product reviews, which I hope you guys enjoy as well. Thank you so much for your company throughout this series, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!